Sam here from Little Pear Tree. Um, I am today going to do another first at something, a first attempt. Um, I've got this dress form. I can't stand it upright because then you can't see it. Uh, but I've got this dress form that comes on a stand. Um, I managed to pick it up cheap at Hobby, Hobby Craft. Uh, and I saw a technique, it's not my technique, I saw a technique on YouTube some time ago for faux, um, faux metal effects and I've kind of want to try and adapt that technique and use it on something like this. That, that was just used on a flat background but I want to try and use it on something like this um, and adapt it slightly. I had some texture paste left from a project I was doing the other day so just put some honeycomb um, texture on the shoulder so I didn't waste the texture paste and I don't know if you can see that it's actually on quite thickly so it, I'm hoping that when I put um, the metal stuff on that I'm going to put on or the tape on that I'm going to put on that I will still be able to get some of this definition if I can't I can't but if I can I can so basically it's going to be using this double sided uh, foil tape, I say foil tape, it's really really flexible um, but it is just foil and then it's got a backing on it and when you peel that off it's adhesive. Um, I didn't have to go and buy this as you can tell by the state of this roll. This is something that I found in my husband's garage. I'm not sure what it's usually used for, something probably um, to do with plumbing, not that my husband's a plumber. Um, but he obviously doesn't need it because it's sat in there a long time, so it's now mine for crafting. Uh, as my husband's got used to most of this stuff. Um, so I basically just started taking bits of it and just cutting random lengths and shapes off so they're all just random lengths and random lengths and shapes just sort of cutting them off uh, and I've got a little bit of a pile here um, just so that I've got something to start with again I don't know if this is going to work or not but we'll soon see um, I just wanted to do a video so that if it did work uh, I could remember what I've done and anyone that wants to know can see what I've done. So I'm just going to randomly start applying this tape onto my paper mache shape. I haven't uh, painted it or covered it, there's absolutely no point because I'm going to cover it in this metal stuff. To each other, or should I leave a slight gap? No, I think I'll butt them up together because if you had real metal plates, they'd butt up together. But I don't want them to necessarily be um, level so they're not going one after the other. I'm smoothing it out on there but obviously it doesn't matter if it's not 100% smooth I guess because it'll just add some texture to the metal but I guess the smoother the better because metal in general is relatively smooth try and zoom in a little bit oh. You can perhaps see what I'm doing a little bit more. And try and keep it random, but obviously try and get bits that are going to fit in in the spaces that you've created 
quite enough. So this is quite a pointed one. I could possibly get that in there. And obviously I could always So far, it's a bit difficult with that light shining on it. As you can see, it is going on. You can see the lines between it, but it is joint. One second, we're just going to move the camera. Okay, hopefully the camera's at a slightly better angle now. Um, it's a bit higher so you can see what I'm actually doing. I keep lifting my hands up and it's above the view of the camera. I know if I was viewing a video that would bug me because I want to see what someone is doing all of the time. So as you can see, I am just adding these um, as I'm aware. I probably should work on the front more than the uh, back. Bear in mind the front's the bit that people will see more than anything. You could even possibly not do the back um, like this if you didn't want to, but I, I probably will. I say that, that's if this works, because if it doesn't, this will all be coming off. So, I'm sorry if the light's shining and reflecting off anything and making it so you can't see it, but hopefully you're getting... Um, a rough idea of what I'm doing here. just trying to obviously pick shapes that are going to go in fit in the areas better I'll do a few more and then I'll show you what the idea behind the technique is Bear with me if I go quiet every now and then. That's just because I'm, I am just doing this as we go. I am winging it, and I am having to think about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Plus, I do like to zone out and be in my own little world when I'm crafting. This is and has been my escape for quite some time. My crafting, which I think, to be honest with you. I've noticed around the crafting community that for a lot of people crafting is their escape whether they've got illness or depression or whatever it may be um, crafting seems to be most people's sanctuary and I am no different and so I do like to get caught up in it but that's part of the reason why I wanted to do these videos because I just wanted to be able to show people you don't necessarily have to really think about stuff and that when you do it just go with the flow enjoy yourself um, but it is nice sometimes and I, I do too to watch um, to watch videos uh, and get ideas on tips and techniques that not necessarily you don't have to do the exactly same thing like I say I saw this sort of technique well, what I can remember of it, so it might be vastly different, I don't know, uh, on something completely different. So I'm adapting it slightly and trying to do it on a different object um, because that's what craft is all about. Adapting and playing. Right. Um, if you saw with that bit, I tried to just push, push the foil in. The foil's quite flexible. So I just tried to push it in around the honeycomb. So rather than um, sticking it all over like that, 
which then means it's going to be difficult to push it into the gap. If I stick it in um, a bit at a stick it down a bit at a time, it gives me the opportunity to just use my fingernail or use a tool if you've got a tool, a ball tool to, to perhaps use that. you can see with the ball tool I'm doing it here but I mean with your fingers you can probably feel more where the gaps are if I stuck this all down in one go what would happen is um, I wouldn't have enough then to push in the gaps and I, I would lose all the texture now I didn't know if this was going to work but as it happens it does look like it's working. So I am literally just using my nail, and I've got my nails are nothing special, they're not long or whatever, but nail, ball tool, whatever you want to use. I'm trying to push it in around the gaps of that honeycomb. And I don't know if you can see. I don't know if you can see there, but it is picking up the shape of the honeycomb in the texture paste. So when all the metal tape's on, you'll be able to see that through it. So I really like that. Um, I could put the texture paste on over the top. However, if I want this all to look metal um, by putting texture paste on, I can I can make that look metal, but it'll be a different type of metal. Uh, and my concern is because this is so shiny and smooth is will that stick to it don't know but if I can do that like that that's perfect um, and that means I don't lose any of the effect around it so I might in fact add a bit more texture paste somewhere because I do like how that's looking under there Mm, I probably would have been better taking the stand off if possible first, but I don't know how easy that would have been to do. It is, I think I did look at doing it, but it's quite... Um, oh! <laughs> that is sticky stuff. It doesn't feel that sticky, but it is. Um, Yeah, I think I tried looking at doing it and I think I possibly would have damaged the bottom of it to try and do it, so... Oops, sorry, the edge of that has just got a bit caught over. As you can see, I'm just nothing exciting. Well, it is exciting because I want to see how it's going to turn out. Um, I 
mean it doesn't really matter if if the bits overlap each other um, but because if you don't have to overlap them it means that your tape will actually go further So that's starting to come together now. It's hard to see the separate bits in there. Now, you could think, why don't I just cover this with foil? And foil you could sort of scrunch up, then stick all over it, and then add some gilding wax to it or whatever, and that will give it a nice metallic finish. Um, this alone gives it a nice metallic finish, but I don't want it shiny and I want it to look like that sort of grungy pop, um, pop, riveted or whatever it's called style metal um, and to do that if you just use a sheet of normal foil then you're gonna have to draw sections yourself because you know you, you need sections to be able to put the pop rivets around the edge of so that's why using this tape is quite nice or just strips of foil if you haven't got this tape and can't find it anywhere just strips of foil glued on but in definite sections because then you can go around the edge of each section and you'll see what I mean in a minute um, yeah, I like I like I like grungy stuff. Uh, I like getting my hands dirty and grunge. Grungy stuff sort of seems to do that. But more importantly, I think when you've got a dress form, which is something that's very pretty and uh, feminine, and um, you sort of grunge it up. I just love the mixture of the two together. So um, that's why uh, I'm going to do that. So. Now, I just need to take my pokey tool. I mean, I'm going to cover the whole of this, and I'm not going to um, bore you with me covering the whole of it. I'll probably forward through it. Um, but, actually, I'll cover the whole of it. I'll forward through the, me covering the rest of it so you haven't got to um, painfully watch me do it. But you'll see me doing it, but it'll just be sped up. And then I'll show you what I'm going to do afterwards. So, I'm going to have to cut a few more strips and whatever as well. Um, so I will be back with you in a second. Okay, so 
Here's my dress form, um, completely covered, including the top. I haven't done the bottom um, because although I don't really know what I'm doing with it entirely yet, you shouldn't really see the bottom, but the top you might do. Um, you can still make out the honeycomb shape in the corner. Uh, and that's it, so I'm going to start the next stage in a second. I'm just going to switch off the camera for a second. I'm going to go and make myself a cup of tea and then okay, I'll be back. I'm back. So the next thing that I'm going to do is basically I'm going to take a pokey tool. So literally just a pokey tool. Um, you could possibly, oh, I might try this as well, tiny embossing ball. Um, you know, there's sort of your normal sized ones and that's a tiny one, that one, that might work. Uh, paintbrush with the bristles taken out, if you don't need the paintbrush anymore, obviously. You just basically need some sort of round, rounded tip to be able to um, create these rivets. Just seeing if this makes a good enough impression. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends what size you want. I mean, this makes a relatively good impression. Um, could be a better, better size than the pokey tool, actually. Um, but if you can see, using that, I've just put some little dots in there so like rivets so my ne what I'm basically aiming to do is where well, you can see the sections you can see the sections like here here you, you can basically see like this bit in here is a section down the edges so not right on the edge but just inside from the edge I'm going to put basically um, little dots with this which are basically going to be the pop rivets so I'll show you what I mean See if I can zoom in. Okay, so I am literally just pushing it and following the edge of that tape that I put down. Obviously, do it as close or as far apart as you want. And just following that section because the idea is that section and its edges and, oh, and with the pop rivets basically um, is your plate of metal now don't, don't press quite as hard as I did because uh, you can see that's gone straight through there and Todd's law instead of it being on the back it is on the front but uh, that's not going to stop me carrying on with the project because all it all it means is that I will do it a little bit lighter um, and uh, I will cover that with something I'll find something that will cover that so that's fine Obviously when it comes over onto another plate like that, I'm not going to go all the way around the edge of that, I'm just doing it around the edge of the tape. It's not on the inside edge of the tape, so what I mean by that is, it's difficult with this light shining on it because it's so shiny, um, I'm going to go around the whole edge of this tape and then I'll go around the edge of that tape. Now if the edge of that tape is under the edge of that tape, obviously I can't do it and I won't run along the edge of it because it will then look odd I'd rather the plates look like they're overlapping Oh, 
I might do is I might do some with one Ooh. and some with the other just to give some different again it just adds more to look at and more texture because all it does is it's giving some different size rivets you can see them rivets are starting to build up there I still can't believe I've done that put a hole in it that's one of them things that had I not been videoing I would have sworn quite a lot but as it happens I was videoing uh, either way videoing or not I would still use this uh, partially because I don't like throwing anything away partially because I haven't got another dress full um, and partially because I think you know it just means that obviously an embellishment of some sort was meant to be is meant to be there So I, I've decided that what I'm going to do is alternate um, is alternate between my pokey tool and my embossing tool just purely because it's nice to have the different size rivets and one style might pick up um, the definition more once I get to that stage so I don't know if you can see there again trying to If you can see there where it's starting to build up to look like it's got some rivets in it so again uh, I'm going to carry on doing that um, this time I'm not going to afford for it I'm going to sit down and do this because it's going to take a little while um, oops wrong way yeah so I'm going to sit down and do, do this because it's going to take a little while um, so I'll come back once it's done but you basically saw what I was doing pokey tool small embossing tool anything similar don't press too hard uh, but yeah just press around and start creating this these sort of rivets around it and again remember that you're doing it around each section so basically each piece of tape that you've put on where you can see an edge and it's not covered by something else that's where you're going to put a pop rivet if if it's covered like this one see this one comes over this bit of tape here I'm not going to go around every single little bit of edge of this tape because it's actually under that one but I will go around the ed inside edge of that one um, so you go around the inside edge of your tape section if you can't see the inside edge of your tape section or the bit that's showing like around here isn't an inside edge of this tape section then don't do it um, but you do that one and that's it so I'm gonna carry on I'm lucky now that's starting to look at the moment so I'm gonna carry on with that and I will be back okay so I'm back I've gone on I've had some tea and whatever as well but uh, I did I did finish this it didn't take quite as long as I expected in the end um, I sometimes have a problem with my hands so I did have to rest part way through um, it does make your hands ache a little bit if you're putting a lot of pressure on perhaps um, you don't need to put as much pressure on but as you can see and again it's difficult to see in this light because it just shines on it too much you should be able to see all these riveted panels 
now I do like this uh, just like this it looks great it really does look um, you know what was a paper mache um, dress form now really does look like metal um, but I want to try and um, make this look a little bit more defined so I want to grunge it up a bit and make it look a bit more like this here so I'm just using my foam applicator um, details of where you can get it will be down below in the box and I'm literally just gonna ah, brush it on all over um, my dress form I'm gonna brush it on and hopefully all the holes in that will be picking it up and then I'm gonna just use a bit of um, a serviette I've got laying about just to to rub it off a little dab it off or however you want to do it and you see that, that just takes it from being a bit like that you know where you can see it's painted to taking some of the black off but not all of it and so making it look like that sort of metallic look so that's it without I mean you can't see the pop rivets in the camera that well but right there that's it without looks shiny and new and then this is it with the black paint as you can see now the rivets are starting to show up a little bit more and the panels are starting to show a little bit more that to that they're starting to show a bit more and they're looking a bit more aged and distressed and you've seen how easy that is i'm literally taking my paint straight from my pot putting it on my foam pad and literally spreading it on and obviously because this is shiny and sleek um, you don't actually need that much paint because it just smooths over it so easily because it's so shiny in fact you barely need any paint at all um, now if I left it on there it looks okay you can't see it from quite from there but you can see the lines and that's still on it but it's the but the thing is, if you leave the paint on there like that, which you could if that's what you like, it all looks quite dark. So, um, you know, you don't get the effect as much. But if you can wipe bits off, obviously not only does it then leave you much more um, light and dark bits, which gives a more aged effect it also enhances bits and and don't wipe it all off I mean in some areas like here I don't know if you can see in a little bit here I'm leaving a bit more black on there than I have in other places uh, just because that helps add to the effect I mean it wouldn't be all even and that if you were oh that's probably a bit much would be all even if you were um, found an old bit of metal and again you can go back over these bits if you want also by doing this you get rid of some of the brush marks so it doesn't look as harsh um, plus also by doing this not just you pick up the rivets but when you're but when you're pressing it on um, and molding it that that foil tape it will get um, I don't know if you can see it won't won't always lay completely smooth and flat it might be slightly rippled or that and by putting this black on you're highlighting them rippled areas as well 
Um, and by doing that, uh, it's giving the, the metal a much more textured feel about it. And obviously, you know, buff it off, leave it on, do what you want really. Um, take more off to add more shine back in. You know, if you take too much off and you think, oh, actually, I preferred it a bit darker, go back in and add a bit more black paint. Put too much on, rub it off. If you rub it off while it's still wet. Um, what would be better here rather than a tissue which is getting a bit cool would be a dried baby wipe but I haven't got any dried baby wipes so I'm just having a look around to see if I am happy with the amount I've taken off everywhere oh love it And that, again it's awkward to see it in the light, looks far too shiny, um, it's not actually that shiny, I don't know if you can sort of, hmm. if you can see it's all, you know, marked and that's probably a better view of it there. You see all the rivets and the markings in the foil which are making it really look like metal. I'm going to take a photo of it like that so that you can um, see clearly what it looks like um, before I get on to decorating the next stage. So I'm going to let that dry thoroughly. Um, it is pretty much dry now because you, you've obviously rubbed most of it off. I'm going to let that dry thoroughly. Then I'm going to take a photo of it so that you can see clearly what it looks like because um, I don't think the video is doing it any justice, it's making it look shinier than it is, whereas it really does look nice and like real grungy sort of metal. Um, and then uh, I'll get started on the next stage.